The suspension system of a vehicle isolates the wheel section from the body. All the power that is generated by the engine is finally transmitted to the wheel through the power transmission system. With this power, the vehicle moves on the road. The irregular roads are the cause of shocks on the wheel, and at this point, the suspension system acts more as a filter to screen out the vehicle. The main function of the suspension system is to separate the vehicle body or frame from shocks and vibrations due to bad driving roads. A good suspension system is one that absorbs all the shocks and vibrations due to bad driving conditions and transmits as small a component of shocks and vibrations as possible to the passenger carriage. Springiness is elastic resistance to a load. On application of a sudden load, the spring system will be in compression or expansion, as the case may be, without transmitting the same to the body. As the spring compresses, it absorbs energy and dissipates it in the form of heat energy, and when it expands, it rebounds. Hence, the main objective of a good suspension system is to separate the structure, as much as possible, from shock loading and vibrations due to the irregularities of the road surface. This is achieved by flexible elements like springs and dampers. Another function of the suspension system is to achieve the main function without compromising the stability, steering, or general handling qualities of the vehicle. This is done by controlling the use of mechanical linkages. 1. Knuckle or upright. This is used to connect the wheels to the suspension system. It is mounted on the wheel's hub. The suspension system is connected to the linkages provided. The knuckle has a caster angle and a kingpin on the front wheels, which helps in steering the vehicle in the left or right direction. 2. Linkages. Linkages are like the frame of a suspension system. All the parts of the suspension system are connected together with the help of linkages. These linkages have universal joints on both ends, which help in smooth connections between different components. Generally, there are three types of linkages present in the suspension system, which are as follows. A. Wishbones or A arm. It is a solid linkage that connects the frame of the body and the wheel hub. It is in the shape of the letter A. The top end of the A arm is attached to the knuckle, which is mounted on the wheel hub, and the rest of the two ends are attached to the frame of the body. Depending on the requirement, a double A arm can be used. B. Solid axle or live axle. It is the main axle of the tires. It connects the main body of the vehicle with the knuckle of the tire. The whole weight of the body lies on this solid axle. The suspension system is mounted on this axle between the body and the axle. This is commonly used in heavy duty vehicles. See the multiple links. This is the most commonly used in cars. In this multiple small linkages are used in place of wishbone arm and solid axle. By the help of these multiple links knuckle, frame and suspension system are connected together. 3. Wheels Tires Wheels or tires are those components of the suspension system that come into contact with the actual irregularities of the road. Wheels are the main components of automobiles as well, because they are eventually responsible for the motion of the automobile. When wheels come across surface irregularities in the road, they move up and down. This up and down motion causes the actual vibration in the body. To eliminate these vibrations, a suspension system is placed between the body and wheels. The suspension system absorbs the vibrations and helps with comfort. For dampers and shock absorbers. Shock absorber, dampers are used to absorb the vibration and dissipate it in the form of heat energy. In damping action, energy is converted from one form to another. In old days, the friction effect between two surfaces was used as a damping agent. Semi-rotary vane type dampers were also used. However, they were abandoned because the ratio of the ceiling length around their vanes to the volume displaced was so high that these units were rapidly adversely affected by wear. In modern cars, mostly two types of hydraulic dampers are used. 1. 
Telescopic damper. Telescopic dampers are quite often called incorrectly shock absorbers. In telescopic dampers, the piston cylinder arrangement is there. In this system, hydraulic fluid flows past the pistons, and the fluid absorbs the shocks and vibrations. 2. Rocking lever damper. Rocking lever dampers work on the same principle as telescopic dampers. But in this case, a two piston is used inside the single cylinder, and oil is displaced through the valve. The movement of the dual pistons takes place due to the motion of the wheels, which are moved onto the pistons and into the rocker levers. 5. Springs Springs act as reservoirs of energy. Springs store energy when an impact force acts when the vehicle passes over irregularities in the road. It compresses the spring. This energy is released when the spring expands subsequently and with the help of dampers, thus, the energy is converted into heat, and the shocks and bounces are absorbed. When the vehicle hits a bump, the tire is suddenly pushed up. In the case of rigid suspension, the full force will be transferred to the carriage unit and pushed up with almost no loss of force in the form of a jerk or bounce. However, when a spring is present, the force that acts on the vehicle compresses the spring, which absorbs the shock and prevents it from transferring to the vehicle frame. The important factors that govern the choice of the types of springs used are Overall cost of installation Relative capacity for storing energy Total weight of the suspension system Fatigue life Location The major types of springs that are used are 1. Leaf springs Leaf springs are also known as laminated springs because they are basically steel strips that are mounted over one another or laminated with a constant reduction in length. They are also called semi-elliptical springs because they are bent in that form. However, nowadays they are almost straight. 2. Coil springs The coil shape is the best energy storing shape for the given weight and a coil spring stores the energy when force is acted on it twists, and stores the torsional energy. Coil springs have the benefit of fitting in a compact area. The life of coil springs is increased by shot peening which increases their compressive strength and reduces and also increases the scratch resistance. The life of the coil spring also depends on the diameter of the wire used and the diameter of the coil shape. The material used also plays an important role in the life of coil spring. 3. Torsion bars In the case of torsion bars, a steel bar is used. The steel bars act like spring. It is fixed at one end to the body and with the help of a lever, the movement of the wheel or axle is transferred to the torsion bar in form of torque. As a result, the torsion bar twists and deformation takes place and shear stress is induced. The material properties are responsible to regain the bar's original shape, i.e. untwisted. Hence when the force acts on the torsion bar it twists and untwists which creates a spring effect. Torsion bars are the bar-shaped structure which is overloaded in torsion during manufacture to stretch outer layers beyond the elastic limit, as this leaves remaining stress in the external layers. The highest stress under service occurs beneath the surface where it is less likely to begin cracks. This helps to increase the fatigue life. Shot peening is also provided in torsion bars as in case coil spring to increase fatigue life. 6. Strut the strut is the main component of the suspension system. It is used in the McPherson strut assembly. A strut is basically a combination of a spring and a damper that has two ends that will be attached to the frame and the wheel. A spring is used to store kinetic energy into potential energy, and a damper dissipates the kinetic energy into heat energy. Both of these components work together to form a strut assembly. The size of the spring used in the strut depends on the load capacity of the vehicle. 7. Antisway bars. These are also known as anti roll bars. Antisway bars play a key role in passenger comfort and vehicle stability to improve performance. Antisway bars act as one of the key components in a vehicle suspension system. As the name suggests, their purpose is to reduce body roll or sway when operating under cornering conditions. 8. Ball joints 
Ball joints are the critical components of suspension systems. It helps to connect different parts and linkages and allows them to move relative to other linkages. Ball joints consist of a metal housing and studs. The stud is able to swing and rotate within the housing. The grease lubrication is also provided in the socket of the ball joint. Inside the housing, bearings are provided, which can be metal or plastic. Two ends of ball joints are connected to the housing and stud, respectively. 1. Dependent Suspension System As the name suggests, in a dependent suspension system, both the wheels on the same axle are dependent on each other. In a dependent suspension system, there is a solid or live axle that allows both the left and right wheels to connect together as a team. If one side of an automobile bends in one direction, then the other side will also bend in the same direction. This is called dependency. Dependent rear suspension types. A. A solid axle leaf spring dependent suspension system. In this type, leaf springs are used as suspension members. The longest spring in the setup bends into a circle to form a spring's eye. This spring's eye is bolted to the spring hanger, and the other end of the spring's eye is attached to the shackle. This shackle allows a change in the length of the leaf spring when it bends. Also, the shackle includes a rubber bushing, which absorbs vibrations and prevents them from reaching the vehicle. The center portion of the leaf spring is attached to the rear end axle housing with the help of U-bolts, and a rebound clip holds all the springs together. B. Solid Axle Coil Spring Dependent Suspension System In this type, the coil springs are seated on pan-shaped brackets that are attached to the rear axle. Torque tube drives are also attached to this setup, and the coil springs are not subjected to the driving thrust. The shock absorbers present here prevent the vehicle from rolling, and the energy stored in the coil springs is greater than that stored in the leaf springs. 2. Independent Suspension System As the name suggests, in independent rear suspension, each wheel on the axle independently moves vertically up and down under the action of the suspension. Many vehicles use independent rear suspension, IRS. The IRS has almost the same advantages as the independent front suspension, but the most important advantage of the IRS is that it reduces the unsprung weight of the vehicle. On the other hand, it has a high initial cost and a high maintenance cost, and the components wear out easily. Independent suspension are mainly of three major types, as follows. Types of independent front suspension systems. A double wishbone suspension system. In construction, the wheel is mounted on the wheel hub. The wheel hub is provided with two links, one is an upper link, and the other is a lower link. Both the links are pivoted with the frame of the vehicle. A shock absorber is also placed between the frame and the lower link, which consists of a flexible joint. When the vehicle moves on uneven surfaces, its wheel faces shocks, these shocks are transferred to the shock absorber through the lower link. The shock absorber absorbs the maximum amount of shock. The upper link is used to maintain the camber of the wheel. This system is complex as well as costly, and it requires more space. In this system, it is easy to control wheel motion and tune the camber variation. All parts can be optimized. B. McPherson Strut Assembly Single Wish Suspension System Earl S. McPherson, an engineer with Ford USA, developed a single wishbone with a telescopic strut type system in 1947. In this system, on the lower side of the wheel hub, a lower control arm is located with a flexible joint. On the upper end of the wheel hub, a shock absorber, or strut, is placed, which is also attached to a flexible joint. Both the strut and lower control arm are connected to the frame of the vehicle with a flexible joint. In the whole system, the main component is the strut. It consists of a spring and a damper. When the vehicle comes into contact with the irregularities of the road, the wheel moves up and down on the radius of the lower link. Due to this motion, all the shock is transferred to the strut, which absorbs the maximum amount of force. It has relatively simple construction, which results in a compact and cheap design. In this system, the change in camber is very high, 
which results in less handling. So it is not preferred in high-speed cars. 3. Air Suspension System In the air suspension system, an air spring is used instead of a mechanical spring. Air springs have a higher load carrying capacity than mechanical springs. Air springs also have the advantage of a variable spring rate by adjusting air pressure, which is not possible in the case of mechanical springs. In an air spring, two ends are provided. One is mounted on the frame, and the other is on the swing arm. Three connection lines, pressure line, return line, and control line, are also provided for operation and control. For hydroelastic suspension system. In this type of suspension system, there is an integrated fluid fill displacer that connects the front and rear wheels on either side of the vehicle. The continuous pitching motion of the vehicle provides an uncomfortable ride, so the main idea behind this type of suspension is to increase the vehicle's resistance to pitching. In hydroelastic suspension, a rubber displacer unit is installed between the frame and the suspension linkage. A pipe is used to connect the rubber displacer units on both the front and rear ends. There are two separate pipes on either side of the vehicle, and an antifreeze liquid is used to pressurize this system. When a car travels on an irregular road and there is a sudden upward movement on the front wheels, at this time the liquid inside the rubber displacer gets displaced and flows along the pipes to the rear unit. Then it moves the diaphragm downward, thereby leveling the car. Thus, the tendency of the body to oscillate is avoided. The opposite happens when rear wheels run over a bump. Once the wheels descend, the vehicle comes to its normal position. Suspension System Types and Components When cornering a car, we will experience a centrifugal force. In the case of conventional suspension, we can feel the tilt, but in the case of hydroelastic suspension, an equal amount of fluid will flow to both the front and rear ends, thereby providing the same amount of pressure, which increases the stiffness of the spring. In the case of bouncing, when all four wheels deflect, the motion will be resisted and the ride will be stiff, thereby reducing the pitching of the car. Don't forget to hit the like button to show your support and stay updated with engaging content that's sure to inspire, entertain, and keep you coming back for more. Thanks for watching and being a part of our journey.